welcome to E5 Kiss Church Online. I'm so glad to have you all with us today. Now last week we focused on the three wise men. Let's have a look at the crafts you guys have sent in. Felicity, your craft is fantastic. I especially like the sand you've added. Sam, well done on your craft. I really like the different colours of the wise men. Chino and Desi, what an incredible craft. I really love all the different colour camels and your bright star. Anastasia, your craft is amazing, especially those wise men and their big crowns. Joel, what a superb craft. I love all the different colours you've used on your camels and kings. Now it's time for us to worship, so let's stand up, have a shake and get ready to praise the Lord.
hope. Now hope in the dictionary means a feeling of expectation or desire for a particular thing to happen. Now having hope isn't easy and sometimes we might hope for the wrong things. For example, we hope to win the lottery one day or hoping something might bad might happen to someone. Now, hope as a Christian is in God and God alone. Now this week's story, we're looking at Nehemiah and the hope he had in God to help him rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Let's find out what happened in the story of Nehemiah. God's story, Nehemiah. So part of God's story is about a guy named Nehemiah and it goes like this. Remember God's family? They were called the Israelites because they lived in, you guessed it, Israel. But some of them lived far away from their home. And one of those guys was Nehemiah. He lived in Persia and worked for the king. One day, his brother told him that a city in Israel called Jerusalem was suffering. And many people there weren't following God anymore. And their city wasn't in very good shape. Nehemiah cried, God, you are wonderful, but your family's home is in trouble. Please help us. When I serve the king his wine today, make him pleased with me and have him do what I ask. Later, when Nehemiah served the king's wine, the king noticed that Nehemiah looked sad. So the king asked why. Nehemiah told him about Jerusalem and asked if he could go back to rebuild the wall. The king could have killed Nehemiah for asking to leave, but instead, he said go. He even helped. That's because God heard Nehemiah's prayer and answered it. Anyway, Nehemiah went to work rebuilding the wall, but little did he know he was going to need to ask for a lot more help from God. See, God and his family have always had enemies, and these enemies wanted to stop Nehemiah and the people helping him. First, they made fun of them. So Nehemiah prayed again. He said, God, some people hate us. Please get rid of them, and went back to work. Now, God does hear and answer every prayer, but sometimes not in the way we expect or even in the way we want. And at first, it seemed like God wasn't answering this one at all, because when the enemy saw that Nehemiah was still building, they planned an attack. But Nehemiah trusted that God heard his prayer even if it didn't feel like it. And God did! He caused some people to overhear the enemy's plan and warn Nehemiah. Even though the enemies were still after him, Nehemiah planned a defense and told the others, Don't be afraid of your enemies. Remember the Lord. He is great and powerful. And on they worked, building, building, building. The closer the wall got to being finished, the more Nehemiah's enemies realized they couldn't stop him by making fun of him or by attacking him. Hmm. Time for something else. They tried everything. They sent messages to get Nehemiah to leave the wall and meet them. He wouldn't. They hoped Nehemiah's hands would get weak, but Nehemiah had asked God to make his hands stronger. They even paid a priest to ask Nehemiah to leave the wall and come to the temple. But Nehemiah trusted God more than anyone else, even the priest and he refused to stop doing the job God had given him. Kids, are you willing to listen to God and obey him no matter what? Well, finally, the wall was done. God's family got to go home again, and Nehemiah's enemies found that nothing stops God's plans. The Israelites celebrated and praised God, and as they praised, they realized how much their sins had hurt God, and they felt terrible. They told God they were sorry and thanked him for helping them. Then they made a brand new promise to follow him. And Jerusalem was once again a safe place where people honored God. And that's the story of Nehemiah. But just so you know, there's another story where God fixes something that's broken. See, one day, God would send a very special rescuer, not to save a wall, but to save the world. He made it possible for not just Israelites, but everyone in the whole world to confess their sin to God, thank Him for His rescue, and follow Him. And just like that old wall was made new back then, our old lives can be made new right now, because Jesus has rescued us. 
And that's a part of God's story. try to do anything about it or you may hear the phrase I hope so which some people can take that it might not actually happen however if you have real hope that things um, can and will be different then you're set to try to alter them hope in the Bible is not wishy-washy it isn't a pleasant daydream hope is a confidence that they have an ex- expectation that you see what you believe. It is almost works hand in hand with faith and trust. In the Bible, hope drives people on to achieving things for God. Now, as we know, Nehemiah inspired the people of Jerusalem with hope. Nehemiah could have easily give up with building the walls of Jerusalem, but he had hope in God and that with God's help, he will succeed. Now, under his leadership, they came together and they built the walls of Jerusalem in only 52 days, which is nothing short of a miracle. Now, we need hope if we're going to achieve anything, either for God or for ourselves. It is a force that motivates us and other people. I'd like for you to think about what hope is for you. Let's grab a piece of paper and answer some questions together. Number one, what are you hoping for today? Number two, what can we do to achieve this? How can God help you? Now it is time for this week's craft. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hello everyone, welcome to the craft. We're here again with Tobin and um, today you're going to need lots of different coloured card or paper, a bigger bit of card or paper, um, a piece of white paper, pencil, glue, scissors and a ruler. Right, you've got one minute to get those things. See you in a minute. centimeters okay you might need to get one of your mummies or daddies to help you with this or you could find something square to fill around instead but I am going to do use a ruler for this um, but once you've got one square you can use it as a template for the other ones there we go we've got a square table right now I'm going to cut the square out Right, what colour should we have next, Tobin? Because we need to make six different colour squares. I've got one square. Now, which colour should we have next, Tobin? Red? A red Maybe one? red. Yes, let's go for red, shall we? Yes. So this time I can draw around this square to make it a bit easier for me. Draw around with a pencil. It's 
Right, let's do blue next, shall we? Yes. And then grey. Okay, you can save that for me. I and will just do grey. Can I learn how to do grey? Okay, you can draw around it, okay? Here we are, draw around it then. Hold it in place for you. Draw. them in a cross shape, as Tobin said, and let's stick them down. Yes, stick them down. So we're going to need blue. Yeah, we're going to need blue. Yep. Right, if I stick them, Tobin, do you want to put them in Mommy. place? Here we are. Do you want to put it in place? Please, can you don't do the craft without me? going across. So we've got our cross now with our squares and we're going to cut that out in a minute. But first let's do our letters. So I've got my white piece of paper and I'm going to draw the letters. So you might be able to do some fancy bubble writing or um, just some square writing, whatever you want. I'm going to do some bubble writing. So I'm going to write my hope in nice clear letters which we're going to out. We've got hope and then we're going to put God going that, going across. We've got it's hope. Nice. That's a G. Huh? It's a cup. Yeah, because our hope is in God at the moment and always. So let's cut out those letters. Going to stick them all together. Yep, we are all Which yet is going to be There's my G. Good God. Right, so then can you stick that on to that yellow one? Can you stick the back and put it on the yellow one? All right, Mummy. Right. We need the grown up 
the help. Yeah, you can run up for the help. Right, there's that O for the middle It'll one. It will be a bit tricky. There we go. Mummy, can you, I will back the O is a bridge. There's the D. on your phone. Let's put the H. Mummy, how to put on the numbers on your phone. We'll talk about that one later, okay, so Later. Right, now I'm doing, oh, remember to stick on the D. Stick on the D. Yep, yeah, you stick that on the green one. Right. On the green one, please. Yeah, sorry. yeah. All the way up, all the way around. Oh, so that was on red. Yeah, H is on red. I got, it doesn't matter. Right, do the H on the red then. Mm, I'm tired. Okay, right, do the rest then. Yeah. Oh, those not supposed to be in the place you're in. Right, there's the P is going to go on the yellow, and now the E is going to go on the blue. E. Then we will cut this out. Yeah, we'll cut it out. The yellow twister mat will be there. Then it will be just the house. Right, then we'll there's my E. Right. Stick with the H one. Oh, it is, it's hiding. It's C H. C H. Stick H on. The you already got the O because the O is the second letter of hope and it's the second letter of God, isn't it? And yeah. And the o. E. O E. And then the E. Hmm. Why is there get us on the cross? Well, because we're saying we want to tell Mommy, everyone. Mummy, please cut across there. Okay, we okay. cut it then. We're telling everyone that our hope is in God. We cut that bit out and then we'll cut the cross out. Well done, Tobin. Good cutting. So you should leave a little bit of an edge when you're cutting it out so that you can see the colour of the background. What are you doing, Mum? I'm cutting out the cross. Why? So we have a nice cross we can hang somewhere, or we can put it on the fridge, or give it to someone as a present. You could write something on the back and give it to someone as a card, couldn't you? So someone that needs to find hope, you could give it to them tell them that their hope is in God, can't you? That would be quite nice. You could write a prayer on the back. What's a which prayer? Oh, any prayer you want. Which prayer? Any prayer which you want to say to God. Maybe a thank you prayer. But a... how we, how we take a card to God? How well, we... you can write a prayer and then maybe pray it later with your family. There we go, I've cut out the cross now. So now we have it, our very own cross to remind us that our hope is always in God.
have stopped.